Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be about OLED burning and it's probably the most common question I get in the comment section below from prospective new buyers. This is normally from people who've never owned an OLED TV in the past and also people who've probably never owned a plasma TV in the past. Both of these TV technologies, plasma as well as OLED, will potentially allow burning to occur. So for example, if a static image or logo is left on the screen for long enough, the pixels will burn in that particular image. And the way that this normally happens is normally the red subpixel actually burns down faster than the green and blue. This results in a ghosting of that image and this is what's referred to as burning. Image retention, which is when a bright object remains on the screen when switched to a dark screen, is more so a problem that used to occur with plasma TVs as opposed to OLEDs, but you can still get it on OLEDs as well. Generally, it's, it's in only very rare circumstances that that will occur. So in order to try and alleviate the mind and just put everybody at ease, what I'll do in this video is I'll go through some tips and tricks in terms of how to prevent burning. Uh, some of these will be actual settings. Some of them will be just guidance and uh, usage suggestions. So firstly, what we'll do is we'll look at the settings and things that you do actually have control over. So if we delve into the picture settings and if we go across to additional settings, this is where you get your OLED panel settings. So there's a few things in this menu. So we'll work from bottom upwards because that actually makes more sense. And this is the order in which you want to actually leave stuff enabled or make adjustments as well. So the very bottom one is logo luminance adjustment. So this one adjusts the luminance of static image images such as logos and prevent picture quality issues that may cause when the uh, that may cause when the TV has been turned on for an extended period of time. That doesn't really make sense, but essentially the message what it's saying is. Any static images, and this is more for sports, gaming, this, these kind of things. Obviously, a lot of the people that post comments down below are p gamers. Um, they're worried about using a C9 or a C10, or even some of the older ones, um, as their primary gaming uh, setup. Obviously, th that's what this particular option is for. As standard from the factory, I believe it comes in low. What this will do is it'll dim the area around any static logos slightly. What I've done is I've switched it to high. I personally do not mind it dimming the screen. And during sports, if I'm watching sports for an extended period of time, I actually prefer it because it does actually help my eyes in the long run. So it's it's something where you won't notice it as it's happening, but if, if you leave it on long enough, and you were to switch to a different import and back or switch to a different channel and back it's something that will obviously be be noticeable but you just don't notice it while it's happening it's not it's not like it literally just dims the screen as as it used to on the old plasma TVs with the ambient light sensor that used to be a lot more aggressive and obviously you could even notice it dropping shades of brightness down so person my personal recommendation for this is high obviously you can you can have a play about with this and switch it to low if you wanted to i would not recommend turning this off um, unless you're using it for a short period of time and you're using it for um, movies or tv series where generally you're going to have more action going on so you may have let box bars but you're not going to have any type of static TV logo. So that's the only scenario where I'd suggest turning this completely off. On, in all the other case, use case scenarios, I would suggest leaving this on low or high. So the next one, screen shift. So screen shift, as it says, shifts at regular time intervals and prevents picture quality issues that may cause when the TV has been turned on for an extended period of time. Once again, they, I'm not sure who wrote that, but the gist of it is I've actually pointed this out in one of my previous videos. So if you were to actually look at the TV in a bright room and you look at all the edges of the TV, usually because the, the, the bezel is so narrow, usually one side of the TV will look like it's got more of a bezel than the other. And I'm guessing every time you switch it on or off, it'll probably switch this up just to ensure that it's getting um, even wear. So basically the first time you switch it off, the left side of pixels, the left row of pixels might be slightly thicker and the next time you turn it on, it might be the right side. It's something there, if you look for it, you will notice it. 
um, but once again as with uh, logo luminance it's not something that you notice happening at the time so you will never actually notice this moving the pixels in whichever direction it moves them be it up and down left or right you'll never actually be able to notice that happening the only thing that you will ever notice is if you were to go right up to the set and look at and measure the distance on the left and the right you'll notice that maybe there's a few rows of pixels that aren't being used that's basically what this is for so it'll literally start on one side and if if it remains on a static image for a long period of time it'll slowly move them across as i say you will you will not notice this so that for me there is no reason why you would need to turn this off um, the only instance i can think is once again if you're using it purely for movies and you don't want to have um, any type of um, cropping because essentially if, if you just I don't know if this will even come across on, on camera, but just in the top corners, it basically, it just crops in a tiny bit in order to um, give you those, those extra row of pixels that it can then shift across. Pixel Refresher. Now this is the one where I wouldn't recommend that you actually use this unless you already have some sort of image retention or um, early signs of burning. So as you'll see from my channel, I've been running quite a few tests, um, burning tests. Once again, they're not really necessary. I'm only doing them as a, um, almost as a guidance and sort of research for future sets in order to look back and say, yes, this is how well the TV did or how badly the TV did, whatever the, the case may be. As I've said many times, I'm very open about what the the tests reveal i don't cut any bits out i run it start to end so that's obviously showing en any defects or anything that may may occur obviously at, at, up to this point it's always been perfect pixel refresher i just click on this what this does is it essentially runs when the tv is switched off and what it'll do is it'll clean up the panel now one thing to note is this automatically runs the pixel refresher the main one will automatically run when the TV, I believe it's around either 1000 hours or 2000 hours. Whenever you hit that mark, you normally get a prompt saying um, it needs to run the pixel refresher and it will automatically run in the background once you switch the TV off. What also happens is when you are, say for example, you've used your TV for more than a two hour period, what will actually happen is it'll automatically run a mini pixel refresher in the background. So that happens automatically once the TV's had a certain amount of usage. This ensures that every time you've used it for say four to six hours a day, it just cleans it up a little. The, the thing about the pixel refresher, if it's anything like the ones on the old plasma TVs, it does obviously, in order to clean up the image, what it's essentially doing is it's evening out the wear. So obviously the pixels are wearing down over time and that's what shows up as dirty screen effect or pixel burning uh, burning or image retention so what it's essentially doing is it's basically evening out the wear and it's assessing which which pixels are burnt out more and it's then burning out everything else around it i don't know if it, that's exactly how it does it on uh, OLED technology but that's essentially what it used to do on the old plasmas and the recommendation with them used to be um, don't run it unless you really need to because you're basically killing your set not very fast but over a period of time you'll notice a drop off in the peak brightness now with this particular technology and most tests that long-term tests that have actually been run OLED doesn't seem to suffer as badly from peak brightness uh, drop. So generally sets that have been tested for two to three years still have more or less the same sort of output around 700 nits, even two or three years down the line. And these, these are sets that have basically been set up to purely, they've been, they've been set up to get burning and the, te the test is there to enable us to see how much uh, of the peak brightness we end up losing over that period of time. So generally the OLED TVs do hold their peak brightness quite well, but obviously once again, as I say, don't run the pixel refresher unless you really need to. Now, settings aside, what else can you do? So the other things that you can actually do to prevent burning is as I'm doing here. So any devices that you actually use with your TV, ensure that you have some sort of a screensaver, be it a fo photo gallery or a video gallery. So with this, obviously my main device is the Apple TV 4K and I have it set. So I think it's two minutes, the 
uh, timeout period. Let's just have a look. So the, the screensaver will automatically kick in. Yeah, so two minutes is the minimum period. And this, what it obviously it's smart enough to know that that's only two minutes when it's inactive, not it won't kick in two minutes into a movie or something. If the device that you're using doesn't have this, then my suggestion is obviously if when you're using those devices, um, I'm not sure which other ones are on the market. Um, I'm not 100% because I, I do have a Fire TV stick upstairs, but I'd, I've not used it on any of these TVs in quite a while. So I can't remember exactly whether that would do it. Let's say, for example, an Android TV box or something similar to that, maybe a games console, some, something like that. Anything where um, PlayStation, for example, you could leave it on the main uh, boot up screen for quite a while and I don't think it'll have a screensaver that actually kicks in. In those scenarios, what you wanna do is switch it to a different input. So if you if you want to leave the TV on, if it's just a couple of minutes, it won't make no difference. You're not going to get burning instantly. You you have you're talking hours in order to get this type of burning. But what you want to do is if if you know that the device that you're using doesn't have any type of protection, then switch it to another input, put live TV on, put a movie on, whatever. Just put it switch it to something where you've got this sort of moving image so your pixels aren't static for a long period of time. Another quick tip is to actually vary your usage as well. I know most of the people that actually contact me are contacting me with regards to gaming and it's gaming primarily a gaming set. However, even if it's something as simple as pulling up the YouTube app and go into my channel, obviously I have to give myself a plug here, so go to my channel and just play some of my videos on loop. That will save your set and at the same time it'll also give me views, so everybody wins. Um, but on a serious note, yeah, even if you're using your TV primarily as a gaming monitor or uh, gaming TV and you've got nothing else plugged into it, so you've got no way of pulling through live TV or anything else, and you've got no Blu-ray player connected to it, you still have the interactive apps so you can still pull up youtube and just play anything play some of the 4k demos play play my channel you don't have to play my channel obviously you can do if you want as you as you know i, I have tons of videos on my channel coming out every day so there'll always be something that you've probably not seen yet but on a serious note just pull up the youtube app just like this pull, pull up the youtube app and just play play anything just play whatever's there play, uh, subscribe to some of the uh, 4k uh, channels and just play play anything that actually comes up. Let me just get rid of that. Just keep your pixels rotating. What you also want to do is every now and then, if possible, as I say, it's it's not always the, the, the case that you can actually do this, but just watch a movie or something on it. Depending on what you're actually using it for, vary the type of content as well. So obviously do a bit of gaming, watch a little bit of normal TV, what I would normally suggest is, and I, I personally always do this anyway, is if you're using it for live TV, avoid TV channels that actually have those really vivid logos. Now for me personally, this is a kind of a sticking point because I actually really like NBC SN. And that the logo of NBC SN, um, it has a lot of very vivid yellow and red uh, in, in the actual logo. So I'm pretty sure if I was to watch it, that channel enough, I would actually get their logo burnt in and because of where they position it and they never rotate it between uh, different presentations so if they're showing three games in a row they will literally leave their logo in that same position for three games in a row. Um, this is obviously something that I'm hoping the actual channel producers and all of the media outlets out there someone actually clicks onto the fact that maybe we should make it just slightly see-through make it slightly opaque move it around every now and then do pixel shift from, from their side but obviously that's not a concern of theirs at the moment so it's it's something that i do wonder whether people do actually prioritize which channels they actually use because of this but for me personally obviously that's one of the ones where i actually prefer that 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 particular ch uh, channel and for that reason i know that i'm going to be using it quite a lot what i try and do is my main game I'll watch on that channel and then what I'll do is I'll switch to another channel in if I did want to watch one of the other games that we're actually showing. This should enable it just to refresh the picture a little but obviously everybody can can do a very similar thing just by putting on a movie or watching a TV show, anything. Do anything different to your normal daily routine. And Coming back to gaming, most people are really worried about the head-up displays and things like that on most of the game styles. Generally, when you look at it, most ports that you actually see, 
they're not solid. So even on games like GTA, it'll be slightly see-through if, if I remember correctly. And even when you've got cutscenes and things like that, menu screens, anything where it cuts away, that, that's generally enough to where it'll keep refreshing it. I mean, you, you'd literally, to my mind, you'd have to play games for hours and hours on end in order to do um, any type of serious damage to, to a set to the point where you can actually see it. Right, now coming back to the TV settings, there are a couple of other things um, that I've just remembered that I actually sort of touched on in one of my previous videos. So if you've not seen the video on my channel where I think it was something like why I don't worry about OLED burning, if you've not seen that, obviously do go watch that. In that video, I made a point of two well, I only showed one, but basically I've got two 50 inch LG plasma TVs that I've had for over 11 years now. And they were still showing no sign of burning at all, 11 years later. And that was a technology that was a lot more susceptible to burning than OLED was. And one of the things that I did with that particular set was when I first got it, I did a very similar thing to um, what I do on this set when it's in game mode. Let me just switch it over and let's see if it's carried the settings over. So let's go back. Okay, no, so because this is in Dolby Vision, it's not gonna actually show you what 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 I mean. But essentially what I do is, because obviously this is this is on my Apple TV, um, but what what I normally do is with game mode, I don't have OLED light and contrast set to 100. I turn both of those down to about 80. What you have to remember is most burning is going to occur when you've got your brightness and everything cranked right up full. What I'll do is I'll just turn on the PlayStation and if you didn't know you can actually do this straight from your home dashboard. So if you were to just go into your home dashboard as long as you've got it set up when you click onto it it'll actually send a request to the PlayStation and it'll actually switch it on for you. So if you didn't know you could do that there you go, that's a, a free tip in this video. But what I'm hoping is once this actually kicks in and the game mode comes up, what you'll notice, um, you may already have noticed it from how how dim that is. Let's have a look, is it still in? Yeah, there you go. So because this is no longer in Dolby Vision, as you can see, so OLED light I've got turned down to 80, contrast is down to 90, Brightness, I think that's the default, and color, I think maybe we cranked it one, one or two, um, but we didn't do major, major changes to it, a lot of these settings. But what I did do is for the first, because gaming was the the, the, the highest usage when we first got the the TV, apart from sports. So because of that, just turn your, your OLED light down a bit, turn your contrast down a bit. Even if you want to crank these back up later, you can do. But what with the plasmas, generally the recommendation was, say for, for the first 100 hours, I believe. I'm not sure if there is a magical number for OLED, where if you do, do it for some period of time. But with plasma, it used to be a case of as long as you varied your content and you kept the, those settings low to begin with, once you went past those 100 hours, all of a sudden, it's almost like bedding in a subwoofer, where you need it to bed in initially, and then after that you can crank, crank it up. And it's a very similar thing with the old plasma TVs where we used to basically just turn the brightness down, turn the contrast down, and then once that's done and your 100 hours have passed, you can literally crank it all up and basically you don't really have to worry about burning after that point, within reason, obviously. So as you can see, this is what I would recommend. In most scenarios, especially if, you, if you're doing it as I am here, I mean, one of the main reasons I actually did that was just to try and protect my son's eyes a little because obviously he's gaming for long periods of time and what I wanted to do was just have it so then it's not blazing at him. Most games are generally quite muted in terms of brightness, generally in PlayStation games and most games. Colours is what they try and blast you with to try and make it look really um, saturated and like basically catch the eye. Generally, your darks and your lights aren't really as affected. If I just come down to expert controls, I can't remember whether I actually changed the... Yeah, I did. So I did change the colour temperature as well. If you want to, you can also leave that on warm too as well. Obviously, that's a bit easier on, on your eyes. And what you can also do is, if you come down to additional settings, just there you've got comfort mode you can also switch that one as well that should help protect 
as well. But coming back to the issue of um, burning, obviously, if I, say for example, if I was to leave it on this screen for long enough, you would probably get ghosting of these kind of frames more so than anything else. Um, you wouldn't probably get it of all of this kind of stuff, but the frame around all of these icons, you'd probably get that retained in. So common sense, just, just basically turn it off, uh, switch. You don't have to turn the actual device off. I am because I'm not going to be using it, but um, switch to a different import, go to your home dashboard, switch back to Apple TV. This should have the screensaver running on here. And there you go. If you if if you're just popping out the room for five ten minutes, maybe twenty minutes, just put it on something else or just switch it off. And obviously, if you've been using it for more than two hours, you need to you need to switch it off in order to give it that chance just to refresh. Every night, it should do that automatically. Occasionally, if you were to turn it on before it's finished, you may even get a prompt saying, uh, "Pixel refresher didn't complete." If that's the case, I would recommend just allowing it to finish. But once again, it's it normally does it well in advance, so it'll do it before it detects any problem, rather than at that point you have to do it. But as I say, the pixel refresher, the manual one, you don't need to worry about too much unless you see obvious signs. All of the other tips obviously incorporate them, all the other settings leave them enabled. Switch your inputs regularly, switch your content regularly if possible, and even if you can't, even if you're a full-time gamer, just pull up the YouTube app, watch some YouTube videos, not gaming ones again, because <laughs> I know a lot of gamers that do literally play a game tw eight hours a day, and then they'll go watch videos on that exact same game. That is not helping your set because you're gonna end up with HUDs in exactly the same place. So just watch something different, watch whatever it is, anything different, just vary your content style slightly. The good thing about these particular ones is obviously it rotates between different screensavers, but it also makes use of the whole screen as well. So that's just making sure that all, all the pixels are actually getting used and it's keeping everything nice and sharp for you. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, obviously give us a thumbs up down below. If you haven't already done so, hit that subscribe button and also the bell icon. That will keep you notified of any new videos that I post. I generally aim for one video per day. Yes, one video per day. So there's always gonna be something all the videos might not be necessarily for you, but you might find something else that piques your interest as well. There will be a lot of other type of unboxing and review videos coming. A lot of the early early videos were mainly centric around the LG and the CX um, and the soundbar. Um, obviously, what I, what I am trying to do is just do everything that I kind of enjoy. So there will be a lot of variance in terms of some detailing stuff thrown in there, some review general review of electrical items, things like that, some of my home kit videos. If you haven't seen all of those on the channel, please do go and check them out. But in the meantime, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.